There is a lot of negativity about Magic the Gathering. When I put the notice out on Facebook that we we're going to do a casual commander, we had a lot of different replies. And so I thought, okay, we're not going to have room. So let's make sure that we have room. So I removed the office that was in here and I moved that into the inventory room and put a table and chairs in here. It was kind of like a last minute decision because I felt like, okay, we're going to, we're going to need the space. In the end, there were like three tables that were filled. Having an extra table for another group if they wanted to come or some trading or something like that is a good thing. The only drawback that I see is that the employees don't get to look out the window or, you know, we've kind of moved all the working stuff into the inventory room, which doesn't have any windows. Another cool thing about having everything in there is security, right? Having stuff spread across two rooms is less secure than having everything in one room. So when, with everything being in one room, all the inventory that's being entered, all the inventory that is entered, it's more secure that way. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done in the inventory room. We need another shelf. We need some more space to stick things and stuff like that. Just it needs to be optimized. The space is not optimized right now. Hey, how's it going, man? Yeah, my friend wants to get uh, Oh, paint. yeah, sure, man. Yeah, we'll just get it done. Cool. Sorry about that. We're doing it. No, no, I didn't want to bother you. No, no, please always bother. <laughs> so the pre-release was this past weekend and I didn't have boxes. So no, I, I guess I won't be doing anything for Brothers War in the sense of like a pre-release or anything like that. And the reason for that is we don't have WPN yet. So we need to have our, to do a pre-release to get the product early, you need to be WPN. I read the requirements online of what you need for WPN. There were some sticking points. So we need signage. Okay, we know, we've talked about the sign. We're working on it. <laughs> so we need to get the sign. You need to do a video tour. So including the outside where the sign is, then you need to go into your, your establishment and show your play space. You need to have 16 chairs, uh, which now we, we have. You need to have new magic product available. So, you know, in the shelves, you want to see sealed magic product. The other thing that could be a sticking point is they say in there that the business cannot share space with another business. And so like, I don't really know what that means. Like we're in a strip mall. So, I mean, we're sharing space with all the businesses that are here. You know, it's not like a standalone building. And I've seen plenty of magic shops in strip malls or next to, you know, I see m many other WPN stores kind of with similar configurations to what we have, you know? Um, so I really hope it's not a problem, but it could be. All right, so we're gonna do the checkout here. And then it's ready for your card whenever you're ready. Yeah, that's a good deck. It has, um, I don't remember which of those expensive cards it has in it, but they, they all have that free spell, all those ones. Oh, yeah. And um, that one has, I think it was Deflecting Swat is the one that one has, the red, the red one. I thought it would take a little more time to get somebody to come in. You know, my kind of expectation was like nobody would come in for, you know, weeks until slowly like word of mouth spread. So having a turnout like we did last week with the Commander Night where there was plenty of pods firing and you know people were hanging out and stuff that was surprising and you know the pessimistic side of my brain is like well it's novelty right it's the new store people want to check it out um, so i'm still waiting for the results on that you know like will this continue will it grow you know maybe that's the starting point and then maybe it will grow you know my wife's like are you gonna need a bigger store like because like to have that kind of turnout for like the first week you know is it going to get to that point where people are the word of mouth is going to start spreading and spreading and then people are going to start wanting to come but we're going to be full i think that's too far ahead you know like i said i want to see if it's a novelty thing if it's something that's going to grow and i want to feel a little bit of that pain before we start trying to solve the problem yeah so you can tell your friend you can tell him you got a discount too right there I'm so sorry. I should have just said that. Out. No, no, that's all good. <laughs> I really appreciate you, man. I'll have those two cards for you when you... Uh... Thank you so much. Man. Yeah, thank that's you. Awesome. All good. right, have a good one, man. Hey, if this is your first time and you're enjoying this series about me opening and running a local game store, make sure to get caught up on our previous episodes. Now, back to the show. There is a lot of negativity about Magic the Gathering. And so, yeah, it's not a great time to open a store. What is being said about Magic is that Hasbro has kind of found out that, hey, 
this IP, this property is a cash cow. It's going to create money for us. And so what they started to do, it's like when you get a new sports car and you want to test all the gears. They are punching those gears, trying to see how fast this car can go. What are the limits of this car? And so we see that when they do things like sell four booster packs for $1,000. You know, they tested the waters with collector boosters, right? Oh, it's 12 packs for, you know, 300 bucks, you know, will they take it? You know, secret layers, you know, pushing, pushing the envelope, you know, started at 30 bucks, you know, now 50, you know, $100 secret layer, you know, super drop, the get everything, you know, for $200, you know, they're testing to see what, how much money can we get and how much product can we produce to get that money? So it's kind of like, if you want to put it in magic terms, they're like the mono red deck right now. And they're just pressuring the life total or the wallet of the consumer, right? Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, you know, just damage, damage, damage to see, uh, to not let them breathe. They want to extract that from them. And what is happening now is I feel like the consumer is getting a bit uncomfortable and they're, they're kind of like speaking out. So what does it mean for me? Let's take it back home. Like I started a store. Our key staple is Magic the Gathering. Am I worried? Not really. I'm not really worried about Magic the Gathering. I think that if Magic failed as a company, people would still play Commander. And so I'm not super worried about that, but I am cognizant of the idea that there is a downturn. I do see the singles going down. I do see the value of seal product bottoming just... Seal product cannot be trusted because of the Amazon dump. That was another thing that people got really upset about. Stores got upset about it. You could buy booster boxes for lower than distributor prices on Amazon. Like I'm talking about way lower. Like you could buy like a $80 collector booster. And like to, for me to buy a collector booster box from the distributor, it's like $160 or something like that. So if you think about it, if you can get it for 80, it's like, how can I protect my assets in that case, right? I, I have no protection. I'm completely exposed. So if I buy a bunch of booster boxes from the distributor, like I'm supposed to, and then Amazon dumps them for half price, like people are not going to come to my store and buy those things. And I can't compete. Like, you know what I'm saying? So those things, those are the things that I think about and say, okay, be careful of how much you're exposed, right? Uh, try to diversify. You know, try to do things that are not as risky. You got to do, it's a risk calculation, you know. What is risky? Seal product is risky. You know, singles, they can be risky because they get reprinted, right? You get a secret layer comes out and then all the stuff you bought at 70% is like, you know. But I can't complain about it though, right? Because like, I chose this. You know, this is my, you know, my choice. I'm doing, this is my livelihood, right? What, you know, that's what I signed up for you know, and so I just have to protect myself by being invested in other properties, things like flesh and blood, you know, things like Lorcana. When Lorcana comes out, I am hyped for that, you know. Not to say that all these people are better than wizards, but hey, diversification will help insulate some of those damages, you know. Thank you for watching this episode. There will be more to come, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. More information about my business, Alchemist Refuge, is on the screen and in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.